Welcome everyone. This is Sotheby Institute of Arts uh, class on marketing in the arts here in Los Angeles. And I'm very happy that tonight we're going to talk about social media and influencers and how they're affecting uh, marketing in the world today. We have three really amazing social media influencers with us tonight. First one, Yvonne Nguyen, known as Yvonne Lux. She's a blogger. She has her own fashion line, which you can tell us about in a little bit. Uh, does a lot of amazing things in the social media space. B. Scott, love B. Scott, as many of you may know from Instagram. He was uh, an internet sensation. Uh, that's how he started out and been on television, movies, <laughs> Netflix, you name it. But he has a really great feed on Instagram and we're very happy that he's here. And Chris Applebaum, who has done some amazing mu music videos. If you're familiar with Rihanna, she did a music video called Umbrella. And Chris was the person who was responsible for that. Worked, uh, I think, with Jay-Z, et cetera. But uh, you convinced him to do it, right? It was a thing. So we have three really amazing people. And I want to start out. And any of you can jump in. We just want this to be a very easy, interactive kind of interview. But how did you get started? Anybody want to start? Chris? You know, <clears throat> it's interesting. Uh, I think I directed, I was just telling somebody, I directed my first music video when I was 18. I was in college. And, uh, you know, kind of got lucky. I went to a school in Amherst, Massachusetts, and um, there was like some block of alternative rock music from like 12 to 2 a.m. on MTV every Sunday night, like a graveyard shift. 8,000 people in America watched it. And I got my video on at the very end because they needed an extra music video from this. Amherst, you know, music <laughs> scene at the time, and uh, you know, then uh, it started from there. So it was really like pretty young. Okay, B, how about you? How did you get started? Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, I, me and my best friend, we were blogging. Um, he was in medical school, and I had just moved to LA, and so we had a blog spot. Um, he got busy with medical school, and I decided to continue to blog. And the same best friend was like, you need to do a YouTube video so people can see the person that I know and love. And it took me six months from when he first told me to do that and also when I started my own website, lovebescott.com, to do my first YouTube video. And then um, when I did my first YouTube video, it went viral before the whole term viral was a thing. Um, and then just from there, it's just a, it was a combination of doing videos and doing posts and then my celebrities that I knew would give me exclusives, and so that would bolster the website, and then the television appearances and radio shows. Um, but now it's more so just about doing the daily work of um, curating content and being authentic. And that is something that you're gonna hear with each of us, um, is that you know, in order for, to have a following, you have to be, and, true, and have a following that's in, that is engaged, you have to have some form of um, authenticity. Great. Yvonne, how about you? How'd you start? Um, well, I've been in sales all my life, and then I start, worked in marketing, um, l learned marketing through work experience and started my own firm. And then I realized that I needed to practice what I was preaching to many of my clients because the, our philosophy is people don't buy the products or services, they buy the person behind the products and services. Mm -hmm. And therefore, um, a lot of our successful clients, they focus on their own personal brand. And I realized that I didn't have one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I started, I focused on mine. And therefore, social media, of course, in the marketing industry, we realized very quickly um, that social media is where we need to be in order to tell our story the way that we want to tell the story. So that's where we started. Okay, great. W you know, there's a really famous quote, and many of you may have heard it from Steve Jobs, but you need to be, you need to know what the customer wants or needs before he or she knows it. And it's kind of, I think, the same thing, because you were talking about authenticity, B, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, or, or getting your start, you know, in, in, in a small way. Chris, are you realizing, you know, Yvonne, that you needed to, you know, get onto social media? I think it is about all of that. You need to almost anticipate what people want. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you all to just touch on that and how you have a sense for that. Because, you know, it, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna make it. And, and I, you know, we're taping here in front of uh, our students uh, for Sotheby's, and you're not gonna be able to do your work, your students, unless you can anticipate and somehow have a sense for what people want. Can we, you guys touch on that? 
a sense for what people want. Yeah, I think that it's a part of just, you know, you always have to be learning and adapting. You know, the business for me has changed so much um, since I first started. It was not a business when I first started. It was just something fun to do. And um, for me, you know, in order for me to stay in the business, I have to find new ways to make it fun for myself and also fun for the people that come to my platform. It's not all about the numbers for me and trying to like, in some ways it is about anticipating what they may want, but I have to anticipate what I may want and that is to still have a passion for doing it. And um, what I do know is I don't know a lot of things and that is what keeps me learning every day. So like these platforms change so much and the algorithms change so much and um, that is something you have, to, you have to stay on top of if you still want to be relevant. Um, I, sorry, Chris. From a marketing standpoint, um, a lot of times when we work with clients, they we help them strategize and understand their target market. Because um, yeah. you doesn't matter what your products or services that it is that you're selling, you can't yes. sell to everybody. Um, so you need to niche down, understand your target. And I like that's that where niche down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that term. I'm going to use that niche yeah. down. Okay. And essentially, mm -hmm. that's what I did. I niched mm -hmm. down. I'm not your ma your typical mainstream influencer. I have a following, a loyal following yep. in a certain particular base, a certain population, a certain community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what now I feel that um, the whole industry is moving to is more micro influencers and nano influencers. So not necessarily people with like myself, for example, that I like have millions of followers, is more so the smaller um, influencers that can tell their friend circle and their family about said products, and that's a lot more, I think they're finding that they have more influence in their circles as opposed to people who have a lot of followers. You know, so I think that you know a lot of brands are now moving to smaller influencers as opposed to the bigger influencers when the business first started. Uh, you know, I'm a music video director at heart, and that's how I work in, you know, social media. I thought it was the exact same thing. Like, when I saw Instagram, I thought, this is MTV. <laughs> and, um, you know, the one thing I always thought was cool when I directed music videos was to, you know, was when I found somebody who, like, really wanted to take a stand and they believed in who they were. Yeah. They were a performer, or, you know, a celeb, or whoever like really believed in themselves and had some conviction, that sells me. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, for me, uh, you know, but I think it's also something visceral. I think that like, at, you know, at a base level, people have some of the same desires for things. They want to make themselves uh, feel better about themselves. They want to feel, you know, um, uh, relevant. You know, there, there are so many things that, you know, I think are, <clears throat> kind of, you know, universal, and I like to try to figure out, you know, what somebody can't really put into words, and, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, so it's, it's uh, I guess maybe that's not really a, a very yeah. clear answer, but I think no, it's, no, it's a, it, you know, it's, it, a, it's an answer because you've yeah. done it, and that's the part of it, like you touched on it, B, is like, how do you monetize your influence how do you make a living and how at the same time balance that with being authentic and you know and there are things that yeah. are intangibles like I think you're touching on Chris that we just can't really know yeah. uh, what you know it is and, and yeah. yet we are trying to provide it yeah. you know like if you do a post you know on on one of your you know um, you know IG or just or wherever you're at whatever the platform you've got to as you do it you've got to get a sense is this going to speak to somebody yeah. and then oh, you yeah. can see you know yeah well I mean for us I mean for example like there's if you pull it back it's not just as simple as like a post it's about like what are the underlying issues and um, that your audience are concerned about that would make them click on this post as opposed to the same in my business in celebrity news and entertainment we all of us kind of run the same information yeah. but it's more so about like how can I take the information that's out there mm -hmm. and then process it in a way that's digestible for my audience and so that is like a lot of like psychology and sociology mm -hmm. and like the where people are kind of like they don't even know why they click on certain things but I know because yeah. that's what I have learned like there's something about certain way we run particular posts that tap into issues that people may not even know that they are you know want to know more about when I first started um, blogging I was doing a blog that was like very like you know all the things that I like and I very early on, um, I 
got a rude awakening in terms of the things that I like are not necessarily what my audience likes. And so I, that was very humbling because I was just thinking like, you know, it's about me and what I like and that's why mm -hmm. I blog. Right. And then I got no clicks. And so I started to um, really focus in early on on insights and what people clicked on and trying to, you know, so this story is our most popular story of the week. How can we keep it going? Is there any updates with this story? Is there anybody else like people like for this person to, you know, be the adversary? So can we find somebody else to start some drama? You know, so it's very important to like, I think like you said, and like instead of like trying to, and for me, like, you know, entertain my own ego. And also <laughs> I was at the same time just covering all celebrity news and entertainment. And then I was like, that's not working, so I need to focus in on people of color. I'm a person of color, and I know all these people, and so I was like, let me focus in on that, and that is when things started taking off. So people need to know, and it's kind of sad, but it's like people do need to know how to place you, it's especially initially. Yeah. So initially, like kind of like you said, like you're a very, you cater to a certain specific niche, and then you build out from that niche. And that's what we do now. Like, so now we now cover a variety of you know, different celebrities, but celebrities that are still relevant to the people that we predominantly cater to, which is you know, people of color. So maybe each of you can touch on this, but what, do you, what are you working on now? What do you like? Uh, you know, I know you need to use the insights, you need to, the algorithms, like you said, be, are, are changing all the time. And uh, sometimes they don't even let you know unless you really dig deep and you know people and say, oh, all of a sudden they changed. So, but what are you working on now? What's, what's the next thing, each of you, that's exciting you, that you're moving toward, that you see, that you know, is gonna help like, create the, the next thing or, the, or, the, or a little bit of the future? Anybody <laughs> wanna throw that out? Well, for me, it's like, for a long time, it was about the clicks, and it was about um, you know, making money. But now, it's just in this political climate, I feel that I have some sort of responsibility to start making people aware of certain things that they would not normally be aware of. And so it's really cool to figure out, like, how can I use the things I know to make things clickable yeah. that typically would not be clickable? Uh -huh. So I take, at times, political stories and still wrap it in a way that makes my audience want to engage with it so they can be aware of the crazy, all the crazy stuff that's going on. Because typically what they use my platform as a way to escape and to not, you know, be aware of things. Like this is my outlet. This is how I get away from all the craziness. I'm saying you can get away from all the craziness, but I still have to make you aware of these major things that are going on. And so for me, that is my new thing that keeps me kind of interested in doing it because I've been doing it now for 15 years. So it's like, it's, in a lot of ways, it's hard to keep it new when you do it every day. You yeah, know? well, it's, it's an evolving kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Chris, Yvonne, what are you guys working on right now? Um, you know, I, for me, you know, I started, uh, I, was, I came on to uh, this company called Ride Network uh, just recently, and it was an extension of something I actually had tried and failed at, but it was the idea of creating kind of like a Condé Nast on Instagram. So uh, we, you know, the, the idea would be, um, well, Ride has about like 18 different, you know, content creator channels, and each one, they're mostly all women creators, which is awesome. Like, uh, uh, with the exception of me, and <laughs> the, uh, you know, and they all, you know, there's photographers, there's, uh, you know, videographers, and then there are people who are bloggers, and you know, who are also like extremely influential on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So by being able to pull this network together, we were able to share a lot of things with some of the um, network, uh, some of the channels that aren't creators but are bloggers, and give them assets so that we can start, you know, um, building in, you know, a number of different shoppable features that we're about ready to launch. Okay, so, so we have launch sort of a, <clears throat> a a market online yeah. exactly, in all these yeah. different areas. Yes, yeah, so. Yeah. You know, with this, uh, you know, we, you know, I mean, one of the great things about, you know, what we, what we do is that we are creators, and there's an incredible amount of equity in, mm -hmm. you know, intellectual property, something that, you know, you own, and yep. um, with that, uh, you know, it's 
it's, it's vastly expensive for ad agencies, for brands, um, to be able to market to people these days. You have to really, you know, um, <laughs> You, you know, it, it, it's like, a, a, you know, sort of an albatross. It's like an aging system in a lot of ways where, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's this committee of, you know, 20 different people who all, you know, are trying to make a decision about, you know, uh, you know how some hair looks in a, you know, it, how much shine there should be in <laughs> hair for a hair commercial. <laughs> Like how much shine is too much shine, mm -hmm. you know? And this costs millions of dollars, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas, you know, we have mm -hmm. uh, these, you know, we have like a this girl in Las Vegas that, you know, has shot Wrangler and you know, uh, uh, you know, a number of like uh, you know swimwear and underwear lines, and is starting to do bring makeup and hair products into what she does, and it doesn't feel like she's selling anything to people. She's just creating this cool vision of, you know, this world around her with a really mm -hmm. strong point of view, mm -hmm. with kind of like a little bit of like a disruptor feeling, yeah. you know, uh, you know, kind of like a fuck you. Mm -hmm. And people really, you know, respond to it. And, and really, you know, this is why we have such great engagement is that we have creators actually making you know, the content and seamlessly mm -hmm. trying to integrate the products into it. No, she's captured something of the moment. Yeah. We're living like in a fuck you moment overall, and she's doing that mm -hmm. kind of a value system, so to speak. Yeah. You know? Sure, yeah. And w one thing, I, before I forget it, is um, a couple of years ago, there was like, you know, this big push just into video. And everybody was like, I think it was like based off of what Facebook was saying and projecting that the whole industry is going to be yeah, very That was video. Zuckerberg's mantra. Yes, and it didn't pan out. Yeah. And so now, and but I've already knew that because for just as many people who like to watch something consume content video-wise, there is equal amount of people, if not more, that like the written word and like for it to be a concise, like you get more of the story. Sometimes people like the personality like me to say certain things, but I mean, in terms of video, but they also like to read it. Yeah. And so I think the best combinations we're finding is um, having video mm -hmm. with the written word so even if the, the word is basically backing up everything and using quotes from the video, that is still very much so impactful and the industry has not moved away from that. Just because Instagram is a very visual platform, um, we still see the majority of our traffic that and the level of engagement comes from people who are fo focused more so on the written word. And a lot of people like to read before they go to bed or read in the mornings or read on the train. or So it's like, I think that in the industry that was a big mix misstep yeah. um, because it pushed everybody into doing video and a lot of people left, you know, left all the editorial stuff that they were doing only now to go back to that. So for people who have a really good um, handle on in, in writing and English, that's always going to be something that's in demand. Yeah, and I've noticed this in the last six months that it seems like a lot of Instagram posts have become much longer text-wise. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the comments to mm -hmm. those posts, yep. they're pretty long, and so people are having this yeah. engagement. Yeah. And sometimes you see people who have hundreds of yeah. comments, mm -hmm. but it's back and forth between the person who's posted and people who yeah. are commenting. And also on these different platforms you have now, is just like the algorithm supports video. And so you have all of this videos coming yeah. to you on your Explore page that you may or may not want to see, and that's causing people to tune out of all of it. Right. And yeah. then go back to the things that their comfort, which is like websites like me, that they know that it's not overwhelming you with the content. Yeah. And I think that's why I went into that the the writing route. Yep. You know, as a blogger, as a writer, I know I can't fit too many things on my Instagram. Right. Um, but I, I still feel like you know, in order for me to continue to be engaging, you know, I still have to develop that voice and and have to be consistent about it. Mm -hmm. The Apple News Channel allow me to do that, allow me to actually have paragraphs of something that I'm passionate about or something right. that's relevant right. currently. Um, you know, I'm, people call me an influencer before I really think I, I'm an influencer, to be <laughs> honest with you. I'm a marketing business woman, that's, that's all I am, and I'm, I'm, I've only been focused on that. And so my, I guess, work on a daily basis isn't about um, pay per post or earning brands and products to you know to, to earn these pay per post dollars it's more so building that influence and connecting with the community that I'm in and the community that I'm, I'm targeting that um, eventually 
you know, I'm able to gain their trust and their business. Uh -huh. um, and that's, yeah. you know, one, an instance of that, you know, um, is for an example, as an Asian American woman, I obviously, it's a obvious niche. It's the same thing what the B. Scott was saying, he's a, ma uh, a man of color, yep. right? Um, I've been able to work with brands, the Asian owned brands that you guys may not know or haven't heard of on a mainstream level. Um, but it's a forward opportunities. You know, I've been flown to Korea. Uh, I've, I mean, I've been flown to Hong Kong, Vietnam, Asia to work with brands. Um, I'm, I'll be going to Korea to, um, to visit a medical and beauty center. And the reason why I'm doing that is because they reached out and said, hey, I'm looking to expand into the U.S. markets. And they found me. Yeah. You, so I've, in a way, have created that niche for myself. And that's, that's niching down. So that's what I'm working okay. on is niching yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. Niching down is going to be the, the <laughs> title <laughs> of this interview, by the way. Niching down. <laughs> yeah. Please tag me if you're going to use that term. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and so that's, you know, I don't obsess. I think we say here, we don't really obsess about the numbers. I, I don't obsess over, you know, the, the crazy analytics that we're, we truly just want to make sure that we're true to our audience. Yeah, yeah well, true. It, I mean, it's all of you, the three of you are saying yeah. kind of the same thing. You're yeah. talking about that woman in Las Vegas who is getting an audience because of how she is, but that's a particular audience. Mm -hmm. B, you're saying the same thing about, you know, keeping the authenticity and seeing what people want yep. and not falling for, you know, the Zuckerberg mantra about yep. video. And you're saying you have the niche down and now you're seeing the people come to you. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is that. It, it's like, and it's actually having to, I've seen people who have started and they had a name and then they're gone. On because I think they haven't paid attention and the, the other, you know the other thing this touches on is this is hard work mm -hmm. I think each of you are working really hard <laughs> that is the key component right yes, here I know that it is. is the key component and I say because I've been doing this for 15 years I have seen so many people come and go yeah literally all of my competitors have went mm -hmm. like literally and it's because you know it's also God's favor and just life you know happens to all of us but it is the daily work that you have to do yeah and that's that's the power of being a true influencer. It boils down to the work that you do when no one else wants to do it. There's a lot of people who come across like they are these influencers, but they're not going to be here for such a long time. Right, right. Well, I mean, most I, of them, vast majority of them. Stealing a term from Mark Cuban. You know, Mark Cuban uses the term entrepreneur versus wantrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of wantrepreneurs in, in, the, in the social media mm -hmm. industry. Daily no, but work. I mean, you have all three of you produce so much content. Mm -hmm. And I know that producing content is not just something you just it blow out. It no. has to be thought through. I mean, all of you are doing some real deep thinking about what each of you are doing and sending out, you know, into, you know, cyberspace and, you know, into the public mind, you know, whether it's to a very specific market, a little bit of a wider market, or like you're doing, Chris, your company's, you know, breaking it up into, you know, segments. But, you know, uh, but where, where, where do we go from here? I mean, like, how do you define influence? Is it just something where, like, it's now becoming more of the micro-influencers, all of you were saying. I, I, I gave to the class, you know, passed on a, a, an article, and it was about that, the fact that, you know, the, the person who has 5,000, 10,000, 12,000, 15,000, you know, uh, followers might be the most influential for certain specific things. But, you know, where do we go from here with, like, you know, creating influence? <laughs> Anybody have like an insight about like where do we go from here aside from the specific work? What what do you guys see? You know, like I mean, I like what you said Chris earlier yeah. about this is like the MTV of today. You know, sure. the IG. I mean, yeah, yeah it, in many ways it is. That's where you know when MTV started, people were so into it. Now people are so into IG. I don't know what's next. Yeah. You know, will it be like you know smaller platforms? Well, well it's going to get it's going to get more confusing before it gets simpler. Is what yeah. I think. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, I mean, uh, there are so many, you know, there's so, there's so many things that the phone's going to be able to do. I mean, I was like in a, um, I was realizing, um, you know, how, uh, you know, like the face recognition with, uh, you know, your, if you have an Apple phone or, um, you know, even with a Samsung, like this is, um, uh, something that you know you probably didn't know, but you know as you were as you were thinking that Facebook was trying to be transparent about all their you know privacy policies and everything like that, you were also accepting the ability for them to take data from you whenever they employ any software into like the face you know recognition you know program. So 
you'll be able to pick up biorhythms, you'll be able to see a lot of like artificial intelligence, like, mm -hmm. like AR, you know, really VR. focusing on like what part of your eyes, looking at what part of the screen and like, you know, how engaged are you and like what, do you, what can the computer anticipate that you're gonna like next? And I think we're gonna have like a bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of a tussle while big marketers are employing the art artificial intelligence to sell you things and to be more efficient in selling things to you. Um, you know, it's also, uh, you know, you're also gonna find, you know, uh, you know those, those influencers who are still very like um, relevant and speaking to, you know, their specific audience. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I think it's gonna be, um, I think people are going to be like, you know, completely lost for, for, for a little while until, you know, um, they start seeing like where, you know, how, uh, how people, you know, on the platforms are able to make the most money. And, you know, I think that's like the next, you know, the next, uh, frontier when you have companies like, um, uh, um, what's her name? Uh, Huma. Uh, um, uh, the bl beauty blogger who, you know, yeah, exactly. She um, ended up, you know, I mean, she created like a really big market and then sold her beauty company for like a billion dollars just recently. I mean, this is big money, you know, that's, that's kind of like stemming from, you know, the world of social media where people are, you know, um, you know, so I think, I think it's, you know, yeah, well, when you put it together, what, what you're saying, Chris, what the, you know, B and Yvonne have also touched on, with this whole like surveillance, you know, society where like privacy no longer really exists. Once you're out there, I, you know, you're tracked by sure. Google all the mm -hmm. time, e everywhere. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not, you know, doing a search or you're not on YouTube or whatever, Google has all these trackers that are going all about. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. AI, the bot world, and and it ties oh, in right. with this too. You know that, and and it has a political component because we see that there are people who want to limit certain freedoms or or know more about what we're even thinking. You know, yeah. and before you know that, like they track protesters sure, now. Sure. You know, I'm Be, not going to. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Sorry, again. I'm I'm not going to try to attempt to predict what's going to happen in the next three to four years. What I can guarantee is social media is not going to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's only going to get broader and and more uh, relevant in today's society. Mm -hmm. So while I'm speaking with students, this is one of those things where I re you know, I've realized is we are now in control of the stories we want to tell. Yeah. So you as you know, graduates, if you want a career in art or if you want to you know, work for Louvre, um, you are now able to tell your story, create your own brand mm -hmm. and um, create that presence that you want. Um, for me, social media was, I started it because of credibility uh, access and leverage. Yeah. Those are the three things that to me was important. Um, it wasn't, you know, popularity, but it allows me access into places, people that I wouldn't have necessarily have access to. And then in terms of credibility, it earns the trust that people are coming, so that it, it enables people to come to me versus me chasing them down. Um, same thing when it comes to art, culture, world. You know, you're going to be competing against other um, art enthusiasts, uh, artists, you know, working for, whether it's working for galleries, um, you are able to brand yourself in a way, and, you know, again, I'm going to use the word niche down, but like, are you a contemporary art person? Are you a history person? You can tell all of those stories utilizing social media. Yeah. This way, and, and I recently spoke at Cal State Fullerton, I told the students too, 70% of employers won't even bother interviewing you because they're, if, they don't, if they can't find you on social media. So that's how important your social media presence and brand is almost as important as your CV, your work history now. Well, when you apply for a job now, you have to put your Twitter URL, sure. your Facebook yeah. URL, yeah. et cetera, IG. So they're going to go and they're going to see what it is yeah. that you're engaging with. I mean, and they now are hiring people who would dig down into yeah. your social media so profiles. So use that and to your advantage. To, and also for them to mitigate risk too. So uh, you know, you yeah, of course. So like, I mean, yeah. I don't know what any of you do when you hire people well. and, and how you do it and, you know, et cetera. If, you know, but, you know, here are students who are going to be going out into the job market or into the job market and want to move up, you know. I, I think that what's next for the industry in general is that I think we're just in a period of popularism. Uh -huh. And I think that that is going to, you're going to see that come to an end to a certain extent. We've had, like, I think we've just been oversaturated with people that are popular for no particular reason. <laughs> 
And I think, <laughs> and yeah, and that has, you know, that has bled into the government. Mm -hmm. That's how you mm -hmm. can now see a person that has no experience whatsoever in being a politician is now the president of the United States. And, you know, we in this in industry, I, in some ways, I hold myself partly responsible for that because I, we upheld these people who were popular and got the clicks, but at the same time didn't really do anything to be popular. So I think that because people have been bombarded by everybody saying they're an influencer now, everybody is some type of internet celebrity, people are gonna start going back to, and why should I know you again? And what exactly are you good at? And I think that's what we're gonna see more and more in recent years to come and also brands connecting to people who are truly the innovators and truly should be popular for a reason. Like I think now things are gonna start being connected back to reasons because mm -hmm. we have too many people, like even the people that you talk about, like a lot of the, I mean, everybody's a beauty blogger, everybody's, you know, it's like, yeah. it gets to a point where it's like everybody can't sell their business for a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So yeah. after that happens to a certain extent, <laughs> then it's gonna go back to like, what is unique about you that I right. should be engaging with. Sure, and sure. so after all that happens, you're gonna, I feel like it's gonna go back to like a period of like, we need to see what you have done and why we are following you in particular. So it's credibility, yes. it's authenticity, mm -hmm. going back to that. Mm -hmm. Because you're right, that we do have like, you know, a governance by Twitter. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's not how that should work. No. And it's, you know, really kind of, I think what happens is we get, uh, there's distractions, yeah. you know, they say this is the most, uh, yeah. the French call it divertissement, you know, we yeah. love diversions and distractions, yeah. and this is one of the big ones, mm -hmm. but we see the, But we have to, calls. but people have to see in a very personal way why that doesn't work, yeah. why certain things cannot be based off of popularism, because people actually in certain situations need to know what they're doing. Yeah. It doesn't need to be, oh, we're just following this person, and, that, and social media has done that. People just follow people a lot of times just because they have a lot of followers. They don't even know why they follow this person. And what's happening because you have so many people that you should be following, it's like, it's kind of losing the effect. In the beginning, yeah. it was a couple of people and everybody would follow them. Now everybody could potentially sit here in front of you and say why they are the influencer of blah, 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 blah. But I think people, the audience and people are gonna start really asking themselves and doing some type of quality control as to the people they follow and who they are listening to. Mm -hmm. That's very true. And I think with the political climate right now too, um, I think B. Scott and myself aren't the only ones that are going towards the more active role. Yeah. You know, utilizing your influence mm -hmm. for good, not yeah. just to sell, yeah. right? Um, you know, I, like I tell, I joke about this recently on the phone with someone like, if you want pretty, you go to my Instagram. Mm -hmm. If you want real, you go to my Twitter. And if, if, only, <laughs> only if you don't mind a few swear words, because in this political climate, mm -hmm. I can't help but swear. Yeah. Um, and I think what people are getting to now is that they want to see those swear words. Yep. They want to see the real okay you. And right. it's going to take some time with the people that have we that I, I mean, in part, I have programmed over the years to be just the popular you know, follower to now be more conscious. I think there's an awakening that's gonna have to take some time for people to actually be like, okay, okay, I'm not, I need to stop following these people. I need to see what I'm doing here. Because I think what's happening with, you know, in celebrity news and entertainment and also the political culture, everything is becoming very, um, you know, conflated and together and compounded. And like, you can't really separate one thing out of the other because people now, even with the posts that we run, is like they, you know, they are trying to figure out oh, how do we know this is true? This is fake news, you know? Yeah. Like, so you're taking political terms and putting it on celebrity news and entertainment, and that's blurring the lines of what they should be absorbing. So. Well, let's, uh, let's close out by each of you just saying, like, you know, where would you like to be? You know, like, I always like to think in terms of months. You know, you were talking about you can't say, predict in four or five years. Mm -hmm. No, you can't predict. Not, you, we have, we're way beyond that. Mm -hmm. We're now thinking, what's going to happen in six months? And, like, where are you going to be in six months from today? What are you going to be doing? What do, what do you envision? Because we, it's hard to predict. Yeah. And most predictions, if you notice, they rarely ever come true. I mean, it, you know, they're life. They're, yeah, yeah, it's life. I mean, it's the, you know, confluence of life. So we're going to start with Chris and then B and then Yvonne. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know. Well, over the next six months, we're, you know, starting to bring, you know, at least with, with our network and with, uh, like, the channel that I, that I run, 
Um, Which channel do you run? I run? I run something that's actually uh, kind of, it's not of any redeeming value at all. <laughs> it's called the Eats channel. <laughs> and it's like, uh, it's kind of like uh, supermodels eat food. And that's basically it. <laughs> and people eat. Um, but you know, I think there's an audience for that. I'm sorry to <laughs> say there, that. Right? Yeah, no, I mean, it, well, actually, I, 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 I kind of came up with the idea from a weird place. But uh, uh, because in South Korea, it's become, you know, popular for, you know, uh, for men, uh, since there are so many more men than women, to, like, have, you know, dinner, like, with their laptop open and then, you know, and a companion who will eat dinner with them. And I thought, that's so interesting, like, um, and somehow that turned into, you know, this Instagram thing that I, that I started. But, you know, um, you know, I have a team of, you know, three or four people that are dedicated to just working with me on one channel. And we're probably going to bring in some other teams of, you know, people who um, will help us create channels that are more around brands. So we're kind of reverse engineering. You know, you guys are, you know, the real deal. You know, I, you know, on the other hand, was trying to reverse engineer and, and try to make a, uh, you know, like a, a, a channel, you know, more of like a, an influencer instead. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of also creative, yeah. To, yeah. to figure out a way for, uh, you know, to me, uh, Instagram is MTV and so you know for 20 years or however long I made music videos I like you know was was like making TV commercials basically for bands so that they could sell more records and you know it was this amazing exchange MTV got all their programming for free so like you know all they made tons of money from advertising and you know like what TV network gets programming for free that's crazy that's kind of what we're trying to do right now and create programming for brands for free, bringing their brands in and um, doing exclusive things. And I think, you know, that's, that's what we're trying to do is six months from now. I mean, for me, I think that, you know, I spent most of my life like um, kind of just like not going with the flow, but kind of like just this seems to be working. So I'm gonna do more of this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to, I made a personal thing to myself where I'm going to get back to my interest in real estate, doing luxury rentals, boutique hotels, um, and using the revenue that I make from my current business to kind of segue into that. Um, just because, you know, none of us are here forever. And I just don't want to necessarily be so driven by something that like, I mean, I'm kind of passionate about it, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. um, it's a revenue stream, but taking that revenue stream and then branching out to other revenue streams and then you kind of redefining what people think of me because people only know that I can do what I do now because I show them I can do it. So it's never too late to reestablish yourself or branch out after, um, you know, you do have something that's successful. A lot of people have something that's successful and they spend their whole entire life you know, trying to continue that or trying to keep the relevancy. I'm okay with however um, what I've built plays out just because, I mean, I, it's been a fun ride, but I am i don't necessarily see myself riding it until the wheels <laughs> fall off. <laughs> you know, I would like to be in a luxury, you know, property somewhere enjoying my life as opposed to writing about something that some celebrity is doing that I really don't care about. <laughs> Very honest, both of you. Yvonne? Um, I have quite a few things. I w would like to, or I'm, I'm contemplating starting a podcast right now. You should do it. Yeah, thank you. I do a podcast and it's <laughs> very successful because it helps you, um, you know, regardless of the revenue that it may or may not generate, it helps you engage with people in such an intimate way. Mm -hmm. And podcast listeners are the type of listeners yep. that would do anything for you. If someone can okay. listen to you ramble on for like an hour or two, <laughs> then trust and believe they will buy a book, yeah. they will buy your makeup, they will show up for you when you speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, no definitely. Do I, I do think that I think the, we're becoming a culture um, that is more accepting of podcasts, not just TV, not just reading. Um, and again, I think, again, going back to you, using your influence for good, I think starting from now to 2020, I will be extremely active. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure some of you guys know what that means. Um, so I think podcast is also a way for me to authentically, um, you know, engage and also, you know, giving 
valid, researched, informed information yep. versus what's everything that's kind of jumbled out there. Um, but it's also building additional value for my marketing and branding clients. Yep. You know, people that are coming to me now that you know I have, I don't just have the Instagram or the Facebook. I also have the Apple News Channel, and then she also has the podcast. Mm -hmm. Everything that I've done is has organically grew because I wanted to add additional value to my clients. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, added value. Added value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And packages, like what we sell all the time is just packages. Yeah. We sell you the website, the Instagram, the podcast, you know, exactly. the whole thing. Yeah. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. under, uh, probably going to be more so is continuing to brand myself in a certain way. Again, yeah. I, don't, I don't look to appeal to m millions of people. Um, I just want to be, you know, um, be able to um, have this base that I, you know, that is growing, of course, but I'm, I'm, I understand that I can talk back and forth with them. I want that genuine contact, that genuine engagement. Hence, that's why I think podcast also yep. helps. Um, and of course, additionally, I do want to grow the Apple News Channel. I think we have so many topics, important topics mm -hmm. that we need to touch yeah. on. And I will continue to stay true to my fashion and beauty addiction stories because that's who I am, you know. And I, I love food, and I'm going to continue to work with those things. You know, I'm able in a, I'm a, in a position where I don't say yes to everybody and everything. I want to be able to again because you know my target doesn't want me to say yes to everything and everybody. Um, so therefore, again, continuing to, to be that targeted. Um, and then long term, possibly TV. Not acting, I cannot act, um, but more so just mm -hmm. doing what I do, being who I am, and hopefully having additional channels mm -hmm. to reach out to even more people. Excellent, my God, you guys are three marketers. <laughs> By the way, that's what, that's what I heard mm -hmm. <laughs> through, through this interview. You were all great, and it's so nice of you all to come out and you know, on a Monday evening and share your views and your work and your ideas. Yeah. Uh, and we'll get it out there uh, yeah. you know, to the world beyond this uh, evening. And I just wanna thank each of you. Chris, thank you. B, thank you. Yvonne, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> wonderful.